American West was still wild. They were its master. On the back of the horse, they swept across the plains. At a river called the Little Bighorn, under a warrior called Crazy Horse, they humbled a nation and won the greatest victory in the wars for the West. On a spring morning in 1870, a Sioux warrior speaks of the wolf that stalks his sleep. A good sign for a raid. Scouts have spotted a herd of ponies one day's walk from the village. They belong to a war party of their bitter enemy, the Crow. On the wide open plains, power rides with the horse and the tribe that owns the most. In battle, this small band is no match for a Crow war party. Today, their weapons will not be axe or arrow, but the buffalo hide rope and stealth. The warrior curly hair is armed with just a stick a record of courage marked by hawk's feathers and strips of ermine. This day he hopes to capture more than horses. He is after glory. Crow are caught off guard, and Curly Hair seizes the best horse. Suddenly he turns back for a greater prize. By touching an armed enemy with his coup stick, he will disgrace the Crow and honor himself if he survives. He has risked death and humbled his foe. Today on his coup stick, he will add one more honor. About 30 years earlier, the youngest Sioux warrior came into his tribe. Like every child, he was given a sacred pouch to protect him. Inside, a piece of his umbilical cord. In boyhood, his hair would grow light and wavy, and he would gain the name Curly Hair. Not till he proved his bravery would he earn his father's name, Tashunka Witko, Crazy Horse. The tribe of Curly Hair was called the Lakota, one of three large tribes that made up the great nation of the Sioux. Nearly 200 years earlier, stronger tribes forced the Sioux from the lands they farmed near the Great Lakes. With only dogs as pack animals, the Sioux moved west, toward the flat land where great horned beasts were fabled to roam. When they reached these great plains, the Sioux found that the fables were true.
The trail of the buffalo became the way of the Sioux. For most of the year, in bands a few hundred strong, they followed the herds. Their way of life now depended on the buffalo and that other great animal of the plains, the horse. Astride the animal's bare back, a Sioux warrior could hunt farther and faster than ever. At an early age, Curly Hair learned to shoot with iron-tipped arrows. Everything else was trial and error. Tribe survival depended on the warrior's skill with the bow. Silent and quick and deadly at a hundred yards. Every scrap of the buffalo was used for drinking horns, for shields and teepees, for saddles on long journeys. The hooves became toys to teach children the ways of hunting and fighting. The hides were dried for robes, scraped for rawhide, tanned for shirts and moccasins. No war party would set out without several pair for each man. A time of making moccasins meant a time for war. The sinews of the buffalo stitched their moccasins and strung their bows. The bows brought down the buffalo. The cycle began anew. No creature was so revered as the buffalo. After it was killed, it was celebrated. From the buffalo 